Okay, I thought today is a good day to explain to you or, or show you all the uh, changes that have been made recently with all the um, power issues that have been going on and the cold outside and I'm going to start off with fridge and freezer situation and what have I come to as a solution for now it's not permanent, it's all temporary what I've done so far, what the solution is for now First of all, the freezer is now covered because the top is super cold. I have put it on minus 18 degrees. I had it on minus 21st, but it doesn't make a difference. It really doesn't. Uh, the, the fridge converted the freezer, or being originally a freezer, I don't know how else to say it. It's now fully stuffed with dog food and vegetables, frozen vegetables. I have a little cover in here, I'm gonna explain in a minute. So yeah, it's always almost empty. I have to reorder again. Where is it? Yeah. So here we have the uh, freezer with the dog food, mostly, which is what it's for. It's mostly for the dog food. So what is the situation with that board? The, the board is because the freezer is losing the temperature rapidly literally so what i have done first we have put the freezer on put the dog food in i had to put it back in place first and then realized um after about a few days running it just ran constantly and it drove me crazy it literally ran constantly and what i had to do is was getting a thermostat to measure the temperature in there to see how cold it is. First I used my normal thermometer to see the temperature in the freezer because I didn't have any temperature measurement on hand. So what I did is use that therm thermometer to see what the freezer temperature was because it just drove me crazy that it was running constantly and then sometimes for 15 to 20 minutes at a time switched off then it jumped on five minutes later 15 to 20 minutes at a time or even longer sometimes when i had bought a whole batch of dog food i shut the lid and it was constantly going for at least six hours it did not drain the battery as crazy as it would have done the old freezer fridge freezer if you have watched that video but still it drove me crazy why is it going all the time and then I'll turn this around for a second. There's this dial down here, yeah? Where you minimize or maximize the coldness on that freezer. I did not know how to how to dial it, how to where to put it, because there is no explanation of what temperature is minimum, middle and max. There is no explanation online ever, anywhere. And so I had to figure this out by myself. <laughs> it's like, okay, if the freezer is uh, minimum full it needs to go on minimum if it's medium full it needs to go on medium and if it's full full it needs to go on max and that's what I figured out for that solution but still it didn't really work properly and so I decided to get a freezer thermostat as I had the one already from the fridge I was plugging that in I was like oh great I don't have to buy another one it only goes to minus nine and I need it at minus 19, minus 18, and I'm like, oh, come on, this, this can't be real. So yeah, I had to buy another thermostat that goes down to minus 40, well, which most of them do go minus 40. That's the normal thing, apparently. So here it is. Here's the freezer thermostat, which shows the measure temperature, which is now minus 18, because it just cooled down. Then we have the starter temperature, when it switches on, it's going to be minus 15 and when it switches off, it's going to be obviously minus 18. So I set that there. This is obviously connected to the inverter and it works perfect. The problem now is that it switches on every 10 to 15 minutes, cools down for about 3 minutes and switches on every 10 to 15 minutes. When I had it on minus 20, it switched on about every 20 to 25 minutes and cooled down for about five. It's like it's like an eternal cycle of problems coming up with that situation. So yeah, it's definitely way too 
way too much switching on. So that means that the uh, freezer is not properly insulated. And when you touch the uh, top, it's absolutely freezing cold. What the uh, solution is for now, as you've just seen that plate in there, is styrofoam. So we, my partner just cut a bit of styrofoam out and we put that in the top for now, but it's not the perfect solution, obviously. So what I have to do with this freezer is buy some uh, foam insulation like you have for car uh, insulation for the, the foamy stuff that self adhesive stuff so I'm gonna buy this and wrap the outsides and then I will buy or get we'll see if a free on Facebook somehow popping up I keep looking but it's, there's nothing free there yet so I'll have to check keep checking and uh, because I do not want to tape up the top, it just looks horrible because the outside is silver and then it means that whole freezer is going to be covered in silver and it just doesn't look good. So that's uh, going to be the solution for this and hopefully we can extend it that way to about, let's say, an hour, hopefully, that it goes on every hour for about 10 minutes maybe. That would be absolutely perfect. But I don't know if I'm going to manage to do so. And yeah, it's because of that the batteries are needing to charge about every uh, two days. But I'll get to that later in a minute. So now you wonder, what am I going to do as a fridge at the moment? So the, the, fridge, the fridge situation is, it's not a fridge, it's a cool box. I don't have a fridge right now. All I have is I borrowed a cool box from my partner's mom. She had one in the loft and uh, I'm using that over the winter now. So this is not a permanent solution again. It is only a temporary solution and therefore I still have to look for a, another fridge and I hope by the time it comes spring I have enough money to be able to reconstruct the whole interior with in mind of the two fridges or the fridge and the freezer because I'm definitely going to get another one of those because they're the most efficient. We'll manage to put them inside next to each other uh, in a better place but that's that's the solution for now. I have a cool box which I'm going to show you right now. Right so the cool box lives outside. It literally is outside because during the evenings I have the heater on that means the cool box is warming up way quicker. So therefore it's staying outside. It's in the back of the van. And uh, I have all my stuff in here. Obviously the dog food in there too. With lots of ice packs. One here, one here. Bottom is covered with ice packs. So yeah, that's that. And I'm not buying as much fridge food right now because obviously that space is very limited. I'm dealing right now with a cool box for my fridge situation and trying to buy less fridge items to be put in there because obviously the spice is limited as I just said. Yeah, so that's that for the fridge situation. It's not ideal, it really isn't because I have to redo the uh, ice packs every day. Luckily I put them in here and every day I exchange them with the other ice packs that I have. So, but the problem is thinking about it. I had to get used to thinking about it, like, oh, today you have to do that. Sometimes I leave it for two days. If it's like five to seven degrees outside, I just leave it for two days because um, the ice packs are still good. Otherwise, yeah, every day. So that's that update. Yeah, hopefully by spring I will be able to have another proper fridge installed. But we'll see, we'll see. There's another update on that, I'm pretty sure. So, what's next? I have not talked about, I think, about the uh, fan upgrades that we made. If I have, I apologize, but I think I haven't. What we have done from the previous fan install setup and from summer, I have now a permanent fan on here. What this is, is like literally the same type of fan that I have in the kitchen window to get my cooking steam out. I put the same one up here and we clip that on with cable ties which you can see right there. 
and that window is always a crack open which is right there because obviously in winter in the UK it rains constantly luckily right now we have a break that's why I thought just gonna do that video because it is nice and quiet and yeah so the cable goes down here to the controller so I bought a controller with it a speed controller this is now on the lowest level and when I turn it up it goes a bit faster. If I need a lot of power, I just pop it up to the right. The main reason I bought this is because to have it on outgoing and ingoing. But the problem with those computer fans, they are not reversible, which we only found out after we installed it. And I bought it and we installed it and fiddled around with this and then we were wondering why it's not going backwards. Either I'm gonna find another fan that is doing both directions or I'm gonna get a whole other window to put in there with the fan already installed. The solution for now is have it on one position, have this speedo thingy going on which is not too bad but <clears throat> mainly pointless because we can't put it back or forth really. The only good option is that we can use a in a high mode or low mode. Yeah, so that's that upgrade. Then I have another upgrade that I'd be able to pop four USBs in again. Before I was only able to pop one in. So if I have to charge the, that fan that is going the clip-on fan, I can still pop my phone charger in or my tablet and I have four chargers again. So they're easy, they're like USB car chargers really. That's all about it. That's nothing fancy to it. Yeah, so that's another upgrade since we had just one before and now we have four. I said one plug, I mean one of those that only worked with one. So yeah, now we have four functioning and it's way easier to charge things up. So now coming to the bed area and this is another upgrade that I, or change that I made. So that thing for now is the air dryer. Since we had a couple of weeks ago a massive moisture problem again in the bed area and after I think it was about a year ago that I put the coconut mat in here I've cut it all into pieces to fit into the gaps uh, in this whole thing covered the whole top up with it as well and the purpose of this was to be able to get the moisture out from the condensation issues that we have getting from the bottom because obviously underneath that is the front cap is basically outside yeah it did not work i have to say it did not work so after one year flaking around with the coconut mat i had enough of it and a few weeks ago since everything was super moist the mattress needed drying with two fans because everything underneath was soaked i had to turn the mattress around because the back was soaked as well i had to clean everything up because the whole flooring of this was super soaked the solution to this now is i ripped it all out i cleaned it i dried it dried the mattress up which was luckily just a tiny bit of mold on one side which I cleaned with bleach and since then I have nothing there I have nothing there so this is how the mattress goes down as well so every morning I lift the mattress up with that pole that we made I pop the fan on and I blow the fan direction that way direction that way the whole day to get it dry and that's repeated every day obviously it's a bloody hassle but that's what it is if you have moisture issues under a mattress and you can't get the airflow going properly. I have thought about solutions, obviously, because this is not a permanent solution either. So what I have thought about is first put OSB sheets down and pop that on the top of here because there are already air holes in here that we cut because of the um, coconut mat and it didn't work. So OSB sheets have a gap underneath as that one would sit on top there would be a gap put some of that membrane down those plastic membranes that you can get on ebay or amazon for air circulation and they're bloody expensive the cheapest i've seen was 
70 bucks and that was just crazy uh, that would be obviously for the whole king size situation but that would be the only solution that I could have seen would have worked if that would all be flat because I think if it's wobbly that membrane won't work either yeah so that would be would have been that solution and then after a while I thought I don't want to put any more heavy stuff in this van meaning I, I can't do it I, I just can't I have to either find a lightweight sheet of insulation that goes all over the place it covers up the whole bed area and then put a membrane on or don't get the membrane just get a mattress cover that covers the whole mattress up which I have not found yet because the mattress thickness is 15 roughly and uh, the most I can find is 30 and that's obviously not working so I have to <laughs> I have to keep looking and I have not had the patience to just sit down all day and look for it because all I could find is 15 so far and that's uh, 30 not 15 and it's just annoying but what it needs literally is the mattress being covered up completely in a waterproof cover literally because I have it the same situation with both of these mattresses they are the same as this mattress just cut up into two pieces so they are wrapped up with two sheets of waterproof cover and that works absolutely perfect there is no mold underneath no nothing and it's absolutely amazing so that literally needs this for that mattress and then a bottom cover of insulation about two centimeters thick maybe so that would be one solution if it works i haven't got a clue because i haven't tried it yet so that was just one thought that i had and we're just leaving it at this because of the convenience so far that I don't have to sit down for days and look for it. There is that situation. Yeah, and the fan is now my mattress dryer, literally. What else? We have now a... That's a, only a tiny upgrade, but I wanted this forever. This is a little switch that he put on because that one did not have a switch before. It only was working for me to unplug the fuse every time from the fuse box if I wanted to use it and stop using it. So it drove me crazy. And therefore, finally, he has put a switch on there so I can just switch on and off in the window if I need to. Which is an amazing upgrade for me. Saves me so much hassle and frustration. Okay, okay. Now we're going to the batteries, which is... Another upgrade, which, what I made, is the battery charger. And since it's uh, plugged in still, I'm going to show you how it works and what the um, findings are on how uh, often I need to charge, as I mentioned earlier already, almost every two days, but how fast it charges and how many complications we had <laughs> until we figured out how it actually worked. It is now plugged in. Um, since a while, it's almost charged anyways. So. This is the cable reel that I keep putting out every time I need to charge it. So that's plugged in here. Here we have the battery charger. We mounted it already to the wall, which is very convenient. So the switch for that is underneath now. And the display I can almost see. I just have to bring it back to life and then it shows me the current, the voltage and the um, stage. It is a seven stage charger. It took me a while to figure out how it works. It, it took about a few days and emailing back and forth with the supplier and things. But they were really helpful, I have to say. And obviously we had troubles with the battery monitor to figure out the correct figures to put into it so it works properly. And I was going back and forth with the battery monitor supplier with it and then realized I don't know why he actually would be able to help because he's not meant to help for that. <laughs> he's just using the battery chargers. And then contacted the um, supplier that we got the batteries from and he simply told me the uh, figures that we need to put in there, the numbers. Yeah, we had it wrong this whole time. What this is about is... Why does it say in 380 instead of 440? Because obviously we have a battery capacity of 440 since we have 110 amp batteries. It's because it's of the C stage. 
of the batteries. If you look that up when you buy batteries, there is a C stage on there, if I say this correctly right now. And our C stage is 80% uh, of the full battery capacity. So that's why we have to put 380 instead of 440. And I never realized that, um, but it's good to know. Now I got the figures all written down and everything. I always looked at the wattage when charging or at the amp hour battery full uh, capacity, which is wrong. You have to look either at the voltage because that's the most important thing, or the uh, voltage or the amps. The wattage is just telling you what comes out, basically, when you use things. And obviously when it charges in from the solar, it tells you how much watts is coming in. But yeah, it's not that important to know. It all, it's, it's more important to look for the voltage. In my opinion, it's just obviously my opinion, so. 50% I have put up to 12.1, uh, so 12.1 will be 50% discharged. And when the alarm goes off with this amp hours, it's going to be 190. I'm not looking at this anymore so much, I'm looking at the voltage. So if it actually is 12.1, I'm like, okay, I need to charge. And we have it obviously a lot that goes down to 12.1 or 12.2. I never let it go down to 12.0 because that is too dangerous low. The charger is a 40 amp charger. It's definitely made for those batteries, which I thought at the beginning or in between that it's uh, too low for them, but definitely is the one for those battery capacity. What I figured out now for the charge is the stages are varying depending on how what, what stage you're on, this is how fast it charges. So it goes from stage two, which is starting very slowly, being taken, I think, 12 hours the first time we charged it with that charger because the batteries have never ever been plugged in since we have them to be charged up from mains power. They were only on solar because the last two years we did not have a fridge or a freezer running permanent. That is a huge difference to this year. And we did not have a diesel heater that needs to be on power. The stage is stage two, which is very slowly started. Then it goes to stage three, which is hammering down, uh, goes up to 40 amps that it puts in. And then stage four is, is slowing it down because it's 80% full. And then it reaches about 14.0. And then you have super slow charge. You can al almost not see it. And that takes the longest to get it to full. So I think it stops with the discharge in, it stops at 14.4, but those batteries can go up to 14.8, and that's the maximum they can have. And I've seen that in the summer, I just never paid attention to it. Since I know all this now with all the charging, I know exactly what stage they're on, how long it takes, and how long it is to draw them actually down. When it's a good day, it charges about four to six hours from 12.1 to 14.0. And ma mainly or mostly, because I don't have the patience to get them up to 14.4, I switched them off at 14.0 and it doesn't make a difference. It really doesn't, the batteries run the same. It charged 12 hours the first time we uh, charged it full and it was a nightmare, it had to run all night to go through and I didn't know how much power it takes, how long it takes and all that. It was a very stressful time for me because I'd like to know exactly what's going in and what's going out. Yeah, luckily now I'm smarter because I learned a bit more and I know as soon as I plug it in 12.1 it takes about four to five six hours to charge from 12.1 to 14.0 and that's it. I know I can plan a bit better. With the help of the sun sometimes it takes shorter and obviously when it's super rainy outside it takes longer. What I don't understand is why the solar power is so much more powerful than a battery charger from a main battery. That's my question. It's like what the heck is going on? Why does it take so long? And after all I'm quite happy with it. I know now exactly when I need to charge which we come now to the two days charging. The problem is the freezer. It runs every 10 to 15 minutes for about three to five minutes cools down, switches off. Obviously the inverter takes power. Then there's the lights. Then there's the fans that I need to run every day because of the bed. Then because of the um, uh, wet weather, I have to shut the door, have to have that top fan on. All this stuff doesn't take much power, but it consumes over time. 
then I have to charge my laptop almost every day. I now changed to my old laptop, which doesn't take as much power, which is good, because it freaked me out. I had to charge twice a day with that massive laptop I had. I figured out the videos that I do right now, I don't do with the GoPro, because the GoPro vid uh, videos take way much more power that I can't edit that on my tablet or my laptop. I had to use the big laptop, and luckily I don't have to anymore because I can use it with my camera. And therefore I can use my smaller laptop to be able to do things during the winter and can charge it in the van and it doesn't take as much power, which is absolutely great. All these little adjustments that you have to make over winter is just crazy, but still, because the freezer is on all the time, and on top of that with all the little appliances, and there's literally no sun this whole this whole December we had zero sun and when there was sun it was a charge of like 0 0.3 during the day it did not do anything therefore I had to charge every second day having the heater on in the evenings which I didn't have to do the last two weeks which was great but if I have the heater on in the evenings the freezer is running every 10 minutes and I have to charge my laptop because I'm doing a lot of laptop work and my phone twice a day and then the lights are on all day because it's super gray it's going down so easy it really goes down so easy and it's very annoying it's very annoying it literally s looks like i haven't got enough power for the amount of things that i have in my van <laughs> and i can't upgrade it i just literally can't upgrade it so i have to live with having to deal with having no fridge because that would drain the battery even more drain i'd say it would use the battery more because those fridges just don't drain it they're just super efficient but not for the battery setup that we have even though i believe that we have quite a large battery setup for this van type which i said already is four batteries um with 110 amp hours which is like 440 amp hours and we only can use half because they're AGM batteries. So yeah, 600 so watts solar on the roof and you're still not able to keep your power up for more than two days. Ah, it's so annoying. But anyways, that's what I figured out over the last few weeks, having to deal with having a freezer because of the dog food, having no fridge because of the space situation and the power situation and being able to charge all the other stuff every day without any daylight coming in and no no solar power. Yes, it was rough. It was actually bloody rough. And gonna continue because the weather as it looks like over the next week or two is forecast it's still loads and loads of rain. Yeah, I just have to keep up trying not to completely break down about it and just keep going on with my day because it doesn't help. <laughs> so yeah, uh, this is the whole situation, the whole setup. I hope the video didn't get too long. I will have to see when I edit it. Yeah, this, this, is, the, uh, this is the update of what is happening at the moment, power situation wise and everything. Yeah, we'll see how we get on with this. I'm, I'm living with this literally since we figured out with the freezer situation and, and I bought that thermostat and I've been living with this whole charging situation since then. I have to go through the next couple of months and then we're finished with grey weather, short days. The, the days already getting longer slightly. Slowly, slowly, slowly. <laughs> I just can't wait for longer days. I really can't. For all that trouble with the charging, it's just driving me mad. Yeah, waiting for longer days to happen and hopefully have spring soon. <laughs> That's how I think. That's how I think, but it's just like, yeah, we're just at the start of winter, I think. So I have to go through the next two months and it will work. It will work. I just have to be patient and just keep going with what I need to do. <laughs> okay, that's it for me. Let me know in the comments what your battery charger situation is. If you have the same, what setup you're having, anything. Just let me know how you get through the winter with your van or your living situation. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Yeah, just give you quick glimpse of the doggies and then I'm out.